you know, I was sitting uh, right back there a few minutes ago, and uh, he says, is there anyone else that wants to testify? I said, God, if, if you want me to testify, I need the pastor to ask me to testify. <laughs> and about 20 seconds, he walks over, sits down, you want to testify? I said, oh, I have no choice now. I, I'm, I'm in uh, chains. So, uh, you know, I, I, I read the Word of God regularly. Uh, I love the Word of God, but you know, there's something that I can give you that's unique, and that is my testimony. And that's the one thing that God has given to me that I can share with you that's unique. It's different. That's right. And the Bible says, uh, Jeremiah 29:11. many people know this verse, but it's a powerful verse. It says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You know, so we know that God has not only a plan for us, but it's a really good plan. And uh, we can read Bible verses, but it changes us completely when God starts to manifest this in our lives, you know. So when I first gave my uh, life to Christ, I, I met uh, at two people, and uh, one of them was over the telephone, and they told me about an encounter that they had with Christ that was very tangible. They, they saw God, and, and the testimony was very powerful to me, and I just knew what he said was true, and I hung, I hung on to that. So I started to read the Bible. I started praying, and uh, I was really struggling for a while, uh, getting free of some bondage, and um, uh, he, that man told me, he said, you need to do three things. He said, you need to find a good church. He said, you can tell the church by the amount of love that's in the church. That's how you know when you have a good church. He said, you need to get a prayer partner because there's power in agreement. And he said, you need to get baptized. Okay. So it was about uh, three months later. I, I did not have a prayer partner. I, didn't, I had not been baptized, and I could not find a church. And, and the reason for that was because I had been reading all these things about how uh, there was all these evil things happening in the world. And... And I had was I was brought up in kind of a religious type denomination of Christianity that I had I walked away from because I didn't see God there I didn't see the power of God manifest there was, and so, uh, about three months later I I reached out to a friend that was living in Connecticut I was living up in Boston and he invited me to come to uh, the church with him and I'm sitting in the back and the pastor started to preach on baptism, and I started quit I started like getting uncomfortable I said I. I, I got to do this. I got to do this. God was speaking. I felt like there was no one else in the room. I, it was just me and God. He was telling me, right now you're going to do this. So I went forward, and I, uh, I, I asked somebody. I said, I need to do this. He said, come back on Thursday night. We're going to do a service, and you, and you can get baptized. I said, okay. So after work, I left work on a Thursday night in Boston. I drove all the way down to Groton because I felt God was leading me to do that. Uh, I got baptized. Amazing things happened for time's sake. I won't tell you even, but... Um, the next day, I lost my job. Okay, uh, the Bible says God has a good plan for us. What happened here? I got baptized and I lost my job. That doesn't seem good to me, you know. So, so uh, I, I felt I was very, I was still happy because it was a proof that there was something that had ha transpired, that something had happened. I, either it was a devil or God was doing it. Something. This is real, you, you know. And so I. Uh, uh, after a couple of, of weeks, I was unemployed. I had gone through stents of unemployment. God actually was calling me. Brother Mike mentioned earlier that he realized that God had been dealing with him before he had even come. And, and so God had been dealing with me before I, I had even come to this point. And so um, I, I had lost some jobs before this, and I didn't want to go back into debt. I didn't want to do this thing. I felt God was leading me down to Connecticut. Why did I get baptized down in Groton? So I said, I'm going, I'm going down to Connecticut. And I, ended up, I stayed with my parents. Uh, as you know, th I was 33 years old. You know, when, when he preached the sermon on baptism, that was my 33rd birthday. This is wow. very, God has everything under control to the minute. He knows everything that's going on, he, I assure you. And so I... Uh, I ended up, I was very happy, I started uh, going to Bible studies, um, you know, the, in talking to the man that, that told me that he had the encounter with Christ, there was a certain way he, he was talking, he talked about God in a way I'd never heard before, and he read right from the scriptures, but he talked about, you need to receive the Holy Ghost, you need to tell me about this, you, you need to find someone, and he lived down in Florida, so I, I was going to move, I was like, maybe I just moved to Florida to be with this guy, and I said, if I do that, I'm not trusting God. So I said, God, Lord, will you show me? Bring me the teacher, you know. And, and then very shortly after that, I, I met uh, Brother Joe here. And, and he said, you know, Jesus came to me. I said, what is this man? What, who are these people? Jesus comes and talks to them. I never met them before. What, what is this, you, you know? And, and uh, all of a sudden, God started introducing me to all these people that have these testimonies. And so 
uh, I started going to those meetings and God was dealing with me. I, I was unemployed, even though I, I quit. You know, I didn't quit. God delivered me from from uh, from alcohol. He delivered me from gambling. He delivered me from smoking. He was, he, you know, the the sea was parting and, and taking me out of Egypt, and, and he was bringing me into the wilderness. <laughs> and and uh, about eight, eight months later, I'm still living at home. I still got no job. Okay, and uh, I I was making money w w with unemployment. I actually had more money than I was even when I had a job because of God's grace and the, the way He works. But I started reading in the Bible. God wants us to work, and you know, there's a lot of things, and He started to convict me on this. And uh, so, but I said, God, you know, I've given my life to you. It's eight months. Okay, I've given my life to you. Eight months later, I have nothing. I have no job. I have no wife. I'm living at home with my parents. I'm 33 years old. This is not. Many other, you know, I thought you had a good plan for me. What happened here? So I, I had got it in my heart that I was going to read the Bible cover to cover. I, I still haven't done it. I mean, I've gone, I've read it many times, but not page to page, you know. And uh, so I, I started to read, read in Exodus how, how, how God took the, the Jewish people and he takes them, he parts the sea, he does the miracles. They go into the wilderness, and this is where I am this morning. And I just gotten through complaining, okay, and, uh, and, he shows me that, the, that these, these uh, Jewish people start to complain, and God sends snakes to kill them. I said, oh, God, <laughs> this is not good. This is not good at all. I said, please don't kill me, you know. Lord, don't kill me. And, and you know, the Bible says that, that the things in the Old Testament happen as examples for us so we can learn from them. So praise God for that. And so I said, Lord, you just show me what job you want me to take, okay? Now, that was very key. So I, 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 went, I went to the gym that morning, and uh, I, I came home. I started to talk to somebody back and forth with uh, the, the G-chat, you know, the, the Google chat, just on the Internet. And he says, uh, what's, what's the matter? Now, I didn't complain, and there's no tone. It's the Internet. I, I don't know why he asked me that, okay? And uh, I said, well, I'm thinking about taking this job, in, in, but it's in Pittsburgh, and I, I don't want to do it. He said, uh, well, what do you like to do? And I said, well, I don't know, the job's not this. He said, I didn't ask you that. He, he said, what do you like to do? Now, I, I went to UConn. I have a finance degree. I had I was pretty decent jobs up in Boston, you know. And I said, I got to this point. I said, honestly, all I like to do at this point is cook and read my Bible. I said, I don't know how I'm going to get a job doing that, okay? So uh, I ended up uh, a few... After this conversation, he's like, you like to cook? I said, yes, I do. I told him I made this roasted like a lamb for Christmas. I, I, I explained the whole thing, how I marinated it overnight. Everyone loved it. You know, I told him in very detail how much I like to cook, okay? And so a couple minutes later, I sent an email to somebody I, I knew in Connecticut. I, my, I kind of been stirred up now. I needed a job. So I sent an email to this guy, not really a close friend, but someone I knew that lived in Connecticut. I said, hey, I still need a job. Do you know of anything? He said, yes, I do. Call me. Okay, so I called him up. He said, Mike, um, I'm working in a nursing home. I was working as a cook. I just got promoted to manager the cook. They're trying to uh, fill my job now as a cook. Now, when, I, when my friend asked me, I don't know why I didn't say I, I like to be a doctor. I, I said cook. You know, what the heck was I thinking? <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I said cook. And, and so he said, here's the job. Uh, you can have the job. So I'm thinking like, geez, you know, the... I have the finance degree, and this is a low-paying job. You know, this is, I actually, this is going to be like $200 less a week than I'm making on unemployment. I mean, you know, and I'm like, geez. So then he says, and this is going through my head, and he says, but Mike, I have to ask you, I have to ask you, why are you calling me right now? Why are you asking me this right now? I was going to call you today anyways. I already spoke to the bosses, okay, before you sent the email. I already spoke to them. And they already told me I can hire you. So you already have the job, okay? Yeah. Why, are you, why are you contacting me right now, okay? So I perceived what God was doing there. I, was, I don't know, he hit me on the head with a frying pan. It was pretty easy to perceive what he was doing, you know? So I said, God, I said, uh, don't worry about it. His name is Sean. I said, don't worry about Sean. I'll take the job, okay? So I went up there. I took that job w with, with total joy. And I want to say that morning w when I said, God, just show me what job you want me to take, that morning I had terrible credit. 
Okay, I had no interviews. I had no. I had, there's nothing on the table. Okay, and eight months I've been looking for a job. I can't get a job. By the end of the day, no interview, no nothing. I have a job. Okay, and I have the assurance that God has told me to take this job, which is the key. Okay, now in order for me to get to that point, okay, in order for me to get to that point, I had to give up my own stuff. Okay, I had to say, God, what do you want me to do? Okay, what do you want me to do? Now, this is something God revealed to me after the fact. I didn't know what, what it was going on. I started meditating on the word. I said, oh, this is what you did with me. This, you've done this with other people, God. You're not a respecter of persons. Now, I could, go, I could go on all day. I mean, God has done so many things in my life. He really has. But so I took this job. I had to wake up 5 o'clock in the morning. I had to cut up these, like, I'm cutting up pineapples, I'm blending them for, for, for older people in a nursing home. And ah. they're complaining and telling me I, I'm cooking terrible. And they're, you know, oh. and, and uh, <laughs> I get all these problems. All these people are coming against there. But I still, I, the, the joy of the Lord was on me. I was in his purpose. God was going to do something. God was going to do something. I believed it, you know. And, and the Bible says that we are children of Abraham, and the, the Abrahamic blessing says, I'm going to bless you to be a blessing. That's what God says. I want to bless you to be a blessing. So I, I had a background in stocks. I started telling everybody I knew. I said, this is a stock that's going to go up. I just said, God, if I tell everyone, you've you got to bless me because you're going you're gonna to bless me to be a blessing. So I started telling everyone. I believe your word, God. That's what I told them. So it started to get very, very difficult for me. It was three months. Okay, I'm waking up this early. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to the Bible study. And I'm like, something starts to stir in me. Not pridefully, but I just knew that I was made for more than this, you know? I was, I, I, did, I was made for more, for, you know? God, I'm still living at home. I, I, God, I'm still not making enough money to even support my, come on, God, you know? And uh, so I came home that one day. I was just, I lost it. I, I really was like, when I say lost it, I mean I was at the point where I couldn't be pushed anymore. I really felt like I was at the breaking point. I opened up the Bible. I remember and it was in Hebrews, and I just looked down, I just looked specifically at the verse, and it says, for you have need of endurance, that after you've done the will of God, you shall receive the blessing. That's the word. I said, oh God. I, I, call, I closed the Bible. I said, God, you spoke. I don't, need to, I don't need to read anymore today. So very shortly after this, I went into work, and um, I was sitting downstairs. I was making a meatloaf, okay? I'm wearing, like, these pants. I got meatloaf on my pants, you know? And I, I, my cell phone's in the car, and I, I get a call up to the office, okay? I get a call up to the office, and I'm I brought into the office. The, the, the owner of the company sits me down. He says, tell me a little bit about yourself. I said, okay. And I throw my resume in w with my application, which, you know, and I said, well, I went to UConn, and I started, I started explaining my first job. This is a normal job interview, you think. He says, yeah, 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 yeah. He inter interrupts me. Okay? And I, I took sales classes, and I know that when you sold something, you stop talking. Okay? You don't talk anymore once it's been sold. So he, he said, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, and he said, you know, we feel your skills are not being utilized in the kitchen. You, he's like, you went to UConn? I'm like, yeah. He said, we feel your skills are not being utilized in the kitchen. I said, okay. He said, so we want to give you a job, and went up in the office. Now, a couple weeks earlier, Joe said to me as we were driving, he said, did, did you get that job yet as office manager? I said, office manager? What the heck are you talking about? Office? I'm working in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, office manager, you know? So the, the, the guy starts talking. He starts explaining the job. He starts explaining the job. I'm like, that sounds like, like the office manager, you know? And, it's, and then he's like, it's going to be kind of like an office manager job. Yeah. Right? And I said, oh, God. And uh, so he's like, do you want it? He offered me a, a $5 an hour raise or something. I said, I said can I change my pants? You, you know? <laughs> and, and, and he said, uh, sure. So I, I, I went out to the car, and uh, I, I pulled my cell phone because I wanted to start texting people and tell them, well, you never believe what just happened. You know? And I've been there for three months, okay? Never, never believe. So I opened it up, and uh, I get all these text messages from all the friends I had told about the stock, okay? And it says 100% in one day. What should I do? Should I sell? I said, what? You know? I go running in, and I check the internet, and the stock I told everyone about, keep in mind, the same day, doubled, okay? Now, I took this job at $200 less per week, okay? By faith, the Lord led me. I didn't, I didn't just declare something. The Lord led me, okay? It's very important we're following him. It says, the plan's... I, the thoughts I have for you, not you just go and do something and, I, and I'm going to come with you. No, you wait on God, you know. Yeah. And 
So that same day that God gave me that blessing in, in the job, he raised me up out of the, the prison and, and put me second in command to the owner, okay? Okay? And, and he said, and that same day, I, my assets doubled, okay? And the $200 per week that I had lost, I got all that money back, and then a blessing on top of that, okay? Praise God. So, uh, you know, for time's sake, I'll, I'll stop there. But I'll, I'll tell you, God con continues to do amazing things in my life. So I, I pray all you are blessed. God certainly has a plan. Everything, everything he has control over. Amen? Amen. So, so excellent. What a blessing.